Okay, now we're going to talk about a non-parametric statistic, chi-square. Notice it's chi, not chi-square. And, and the reminder of the differences here between parametric and non-parametric tests. Um, so the parametric tests are, are we're making comparison to population parameters, and we're looking, usually using you know, means and standard deviations for this. Non-parametric tests, in this case, we're we're not looking at uh, means and standard deviations. We're just looking at frequencies and or proportions. Um, they tend not to be as sensitive a test. That means they tend not to be as powerful of tests. It takes a larger difference for us to be able to find significant differences with it. And, and But importantly as well, we can use this with nominal data or with ordinal data. Um, so it helps a, a, num a lot of the data in which we get, we can actually use means and standard deviations. So it's helpful to be able to use these non-parametric tests for them. Um, and sometimes we use a non-parametric test as well when um, for the, the parametric test, one of the assumptions would be violated, such as um, it's not a normal distribution. That would be one of the examples. We have a severely skewed distribution. Um, the first type of chi-square tests that we're going to talk about are the goodness of fit tests. And there's two different kinds of these tests. One focuses on that there's there's no preferences between groups. An example of this, you can think of this like the classic um, taste test of Coke versus Pepsi. And so if there's no preference, we'd expect half of them to, half of the people that choose Coke and half to choose pep, you know, Pepsi. Um, that's an example of a no preference. The no difference from a comparison population. Uh, example of that, we had one of these at, at Bethel a few years ago, where the campus past pastor was talking to um, the the students and in admonishing the the male students to be to get more involved in leadership positions, um, which I found to be quite interesting. And he thought that there weren't as many men and there weren't enough men in leadership positions as compared to women. What I knew he was thinking was the no he was thinking that should, there should be a 50-50 split in in the positions. Uh, the men and women being involved in leadership position. But I know the population of students at Bethel. At that time, it was about 65-35 split. So really, the for that example, this would be the better one to use. You want to say, uh, if you say there's no difference between men and women in leadership positions, then 65% of the women should be involved in leadership position. And at that time, we had some students gather some data, and that's actually, um, that, that was the case. So you have to think through, for this goodness of fit test, what makes more sense? Is it a no preference, or is it um, compared to a, popu uh, a comparison population? And then a couple things as we work through chi-square uh, as well, is we have uh, the observed frequencies, F sub, uh, sub O, just the number of uh, people classified in a particular category. And then we have the expected frequencies. Basically, this proportion stated in the null hypothesis times the sample size that we have. Um, and, and so as I work through example, I think this should um, uh, become clear to you. And then our chi-square, that's our symbol for it, chi-square is the sum, as we see here, fre the frequencies, observed frequencies, minus the expected frequencies. We square that, and then we divide it by the expected frequencies. And we do that for each one of the cells. Degrees of freedom are simply the columns minus number of columns that you have uh, minus one for that. So let's go through an example. This would be an example of a no preference example. Uh, so let's say if I'm, I'm teaching, if I were teaching an intro to psych course and I'd be lucky enough to only have 40 students in the class, normally we have very large classes for that. This would be, um, and, and then at the end of the class, uh, I, I use these four different kind of teaching styles throughout the class. Sometimes I'll use lecture, sometimes I'll have them working in groups, solving problems together, sometimes I'll use some very interesting videos. Um, that show some researchers and their expertise doing their research, and sometimes I'll do demonstrations in class, like I've done a lie detector test demonstration um, before in class. And if at the end of the course I say, I ask them, which of these four teaching styles uh, or classroom styles helped you learn the material best? Um, and so if I ask them that, and at the end, and they have to choose one out of them, 
And so here's what I, I've got three that like my lecture or thought they learned best from the lectures, 10 from the group activity, 17 from the video. And you'll notice here then what's left over. Uh, this is an example of the degrees of freedom. These three are free to vary. This last one's got to make it so it adds up to 40. And so this would be a 10 as well. So this is our observed frequency so of just flat out what the 40 students in the class said. If we want to figure out the expected frequencies for, for each of these. Well, the idea is that if the, the null hypothesis for this is that there's no preference, um, what would we expect if we've got 40? What would we, we expect in each category? Well, we'd expect a, um, an equal distribution, right, for this. Um, so we, and basically this is um, what we expect in the null hypothesis, proportion we expect in the null hypothesis times the sample size um, will give us 10 for each of those. Okay, so we've got, um, we've got this information, we've got our observed and our expected, we've got everything we need to calculate the chi-square statistic. Okay, so we're taking our observed frequency minus the expected frequency. We'll square that difference and we'll divide it by the expected frequency. We're doing it for each one of these cells. This is easy math, 10 minus 10 squared divided by 10 plus 10 minus 17 squared divided by 10 plus, again, easy math, 10 minus 10 squared divided by 10. So for this first one, we got 49, right, because it would be negative uh, 7 squared, 49 divided by 10. We got 0 here. We got the same thing here. By the way, I apologize, that should have been 17 minus 10, hope you caught my error. Um, gives us 49 squared, divided by 10, plus 0. So we've got 4.9 plus 4.9, our chi-square equals 9.8, okay? So chi-square equals 9.8. If we look up in the back of the book, the chi-square distribution, so this um, for many of you, this will be the last one that you look up in the back of the book. My distribution. Here's our chi-square distribution. See, it looks somewhat like the F distribution. Again, we're squaring numbers, so we can have no negative numbers here. We're only we're not talking. There's no two-tailed test then either. So if we do this at alpha of 0.05. And we said our degrees of freedom were three. We had four columns, minus one gives us three. Here's our cutoff, 7.81, okay? Our cutoff is 7.81. 7.81, our chi-square is 9.8. 9.8 is definitely here. We, we reject the null hypothesis. We look at, then we just look at our data here. Students significantly like the, and thought the videos helped them learn significantly more. Um, uh, lecture, significantly less. No preference, no difference here uh, within the, the groups or the demonstration. So that's uh, the example of the goodness of fit for no preference.